Many people are worried about short-term food shortages that they're witnessing in their supermarkets. Wouldn't it be an amazing hedge and peace of mind to actually be growing fresh fruits and vegetables to provide for you and your family? Today, I want to go over 15 seeds you can sow for food in less than a month. And many of you listening have never grown a thing. Now, what you need to get started is generally around your area. Seeds can be acquired cheap at box stores. And if you ask your neighbors, they'll often just give them to you. Containers to grow in can be anything that you throw out on a daily basis. Like yogurt cups or any plastic container. You can even use all the toilet paper you stockpiled when you're finished. The cardboard rolls can be cut in half and used as seed starters. There are many internet videos to describe this, but on top of seeds and pots, you're going to need a growing medium. I recommend buying a cheap potting soil from a box store, preferably organic, because this is going to give you the best results when you're sprouting. Now, tips for seed sowing. On the back of each seed packet, they're going to give you specific instructions on the temperature and the depth and how long it takes to sprout your seeds. Some seeds require soaking, while others do not. Some seeds require to be on the surface, while others do better if they're deeper. So it's important to read the package on the seed you're planting and follow the instructions. If you get seeds from a neighbor, ask them what worked well for them when they sprouted it. And you always want to choose a very sunny location to sow your seeds. Most seeds require heat and light once they sprout. So a south-facing windowsill or a west-facing windowsill is ideal, as well as a greenhouse or a hoop house outside. It's important to provide the right conditions for germination or your seeds will not grow. Some seeds require more warmth than others. And again, this information can be acquired from the internet or on the back of the seed pack. So let's talk about some fast growing varieties. Watercress and spicy cress, or just cress, Lepidium sativum. This plant, after it sprouts, here you can see it's sprouting just in an eggshell. Another recycled product where you can sprout is an eggshell. Just throw a little soil in there and some seeds, and there you go. Perfect environment. You can get a cress crop in less than 14 days, which you simply snip off here the microgreens and enjoy them, raw or cooked. There's dozens of types of lettuce mixtures called mescaline or lettuce mixes. And if you just broadcast these in a small planter, they will continue to produce as you harvest. You just cut off a few tops here and then they will regrow. This will give you a constant supply of lettuce, one of the easiest plants to grow. Pak choy. This is an Asian cabbage, also very quick producer, produces lots of seeds. Once you grow one plant, you can grow this forever if you save seeds, which works for most plants. So consider pak choy. Mizuna mustard and all mustards. In less than four weeks, you will have a green crop that you can be eating, including mabuna and tender mustard greens. Very prolific crops, very high in nutrition, nutrient dense. And there's other brassica microgreens, including broccoli and cauliflower. And then there's the elusive arugula. Some people don't like the flavor. Some people love it. It goes for about a dollar an ounce. And in less than a month, you can grow hundreds of dollars worth of this. And baby spinach, pea shoots. These are just some of the fast growing crops that you can get started with now. Now for more advanced people who have never grown a garden because they live in a shadier area, here's 26 vegetables that you can grow in the shade. I'm gonna leave you links to this article because I think it's important. There are sun loving plants and they discuss it in this article. There's the sun-loving list, but there is a list of vegetables that thrive in just four to six hours of sunlight. And the list is quite extensive. Beets are one of them. Now, the unique thing about a beet is you can eat the leafy green while the beet root itself is growing. So you have a double production crop there. Broccoli, 
You can eat the greens while the broccoli is producing as well, or just eat the greens and never let the broccoli produce. Cabbage, same thing. All these only require four to six hours of sun. Carrots, cauliflower, celery, garlic, green onions, horseradish, leeks, parsnips, peas, and more. I suggest you check the article and get growing. Now, we're going to finish this video by actually going out to the greenhouse and show you what is growing in our greenhouse, and it's many of the things on this list. And the reason we're growing these crops is because we have a very short growing season here, very extreme conditions, and we need food now in less than a month. So let's head out to the greenhouse together and let's check out some of the crops that we just planted four weeks ago and let's see how they're doing. So we're out here at the greenhouse. And we're gonna share with you some of our plantings. We've been planting hard. This might fog up. And we'll just have to clean it off. But Alan and I have been in here planting uh, starts of all kinds. All the shelves are full. We got lettuces coming up. We've got snowball cauliflower. These are pink hollyhocks that Ransom uh, brought us some seeds from and so we're gonna have hollyhocks all over the property. An amazing perennial flower. We got dwarf gray sugar coming up. We planted Brussels sprouts. Swiss chard is coming up. Cukes just started coming up. We got pumpkins coming up. Oh. And every couple days we just plant more. I got some noble spinach, red cabbage. And let's take a look at what we planted four weeks ago. So in four weeks we now have uh, this micro kale that we can harvest and eat. We like to eat it about this size for salads. We've got some beetroot here, which you can be putting in your salads and eating right now at this size. It's pretty amazing. Delicious. And there's cauliflower. It's taking a long time. We've got some uh, sorrel coming up here, which is really lemony. And it's a perennial green that will grow down to about 19 degrees. And that's doing great. Any of the places we had holes... Last week I threw down some lettuce seeds and you can see those are coming up. We got some daikon radish here. We have a whole bed of lettuce in the back. Four weeks now. So in four weeks, we literally can make a salad in here. Here's our peas at four weeks. We got five rows of beets here that are four weeks old. That we've been harvesting the beet grains from and eating them raw. More lettuce. Here's that celery we planted from the end of a celery. And this is four weeks now. Look at it. It's amazing. We've got a bed of Swiss chard. And we've got garlic coming up that we can be using as green onion or garlic greens. And so that's what you get in four weeks. And the beauty is, come on, look over here. Boom! Radish heaven. So those little cherry bells are only been growing for less than a month. And already got fruit. We're going to eat that. And take a look at the uh, arugula here flowering and going to seed. This is where the seeds are going to uh, be filling. These pods here. So these pods will fill up with a row of seeds. And we're going to have a lot of seeds here. Not only that, this is attracting bees into our greenhouse when it's sunny out. Yesterday there was like 20 bees here. Perfect for pollination. And we have a secession here. So we're about to get more flowers from the snapdragons, which will bring... Here there are some flowers going right now. That'll bring more bees in. We've got Gerber daisies that are coming up. And those will bring even more bees in. And over here I can show you all the Gerbers coming in. And here we have a pak choy flowering. 
in case you were wondering what that looked like, there's even a bok choy in volunteer I saw in here. Where is it? There it is. That's a bok choy right there. So we'll let that go to seed. Now, the proof is in the pudding. This is all food that we just planted four weeks ago. And we've been eating it. Albeit it has another couple weeks to go. But if you just scale up this type of production, imagine the possibility. Food is free when you grow it and you seed save. Now, there is some startup. You do have to source some soil and you do have to get started. But abundance is peace of mind in times like these. I hope you got something out of the video. It's time to start planting and rethinking what we're doing. Everything in here is 100% organic, no spray, beyond organic. And that means maximum nutrition for ultimate immunity. Share this with like-minded people and get growing. That's a bow. Subscribe.